Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I make my presentations for my kitchen designs and uh, this is typically when I'm working for a kitchen company, a trade client. Um, I just use PowerPoint and uh, then make it into a presentation just by exporting it so the finished article looks something like this. Uh, so you've got the renders at the start and then the 2D plans at the end. So it's a pretty simple tutorial really, not so much SketchUp related, but more uh, just how I work with PowerPoint, creating the template and then importing everything. So the first thing I'll say right off the bat is a lot of people will be tempted to use layout in SketchUp. And if you don't know what layout is, it's a specific presentation program that SketchUp developed for presenting plans. And it's got a lot of good features. But for my purposes, it's just way too overcomplicated and slow to use. And so because I save all my renders as JPEGs or PNGs anywhere to my hard drive, it's just as quick to import them to PowerPoint than it is to layout. Anyway, that's enough about layout now. So let's close it and I will show you how I set up the template for PowerPoint. So I'm going to start with a blank file. So just go to blank presentation. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the default size to A4, which is what I like to work in. So you can work in whatever you want, A3 or A2, depending on how you like to present to clients. So click on design. Then click on slide size, custom slide size. And then from the drop down, just select whichever one you want. So A4, landscape, OK. So first we're going to create the master slide, which is basically like the template. So it will look something like this. It'll have a border, uh, some text boxes here, and a logo. And that, once it's saved, will appear on every slide. So then we can just import the renders into that. So going back over to the blank slide, we go to view and then you go to slide master. And then at this point, make sure that you click the very top slide. You'll have to scroll up, otherwise it's not going to work. So I'll just get rid of all this. Just delete everything. So let's start with a border. So click on insert and then go to shapes and then rectangle and then I just do it approximately something like that and then we want to make sure that it doesn't have a fill so you go to shape fill click no fill and the outline will change the weight so it's a little bit lighter so let's uh, do that I like it to be more subtle so now, because we want to draw some more rectangles for the text boxes uh, below, we want to save the default styles of the rectangle we've just drawn so we don't have to mess around with the fill or anything. So if you click on the border, then right click and go down to set as default shape. Now when we go to import another rectangle, it's saved all the default settings so we've got no fill. So let's use that rectangle and the way I sort of move it around is I just get the little circles and just move it into place. So just put it about where you want. Let's look at our existing one to compare it. Yeah, that's about right. Then we want one for the customer details. There might be a better way to actually place this, but uh, it does snap into place, so it's not too bad. And what you can also do is just copy and paste it. So if I put control C, control V, and then we can just move that into place. And let's put a heading box. So just snapping them into place.
Right, let's add some text boxes. So we'll start with the headings boxes. So we click insert text box. And then, oops, I should have kept my finger in the mouse. Draw a little box there. And we'll type in here, customer details. And let's just change that text. We'll make it Arial. And let's make it a bit smaller and then bold it. Move it up a bit. And then what we can do is Control C and V to copy it across. Oops. And here we'll write kitchen specs. Okay, let's use those to make the actual info boxes. So Control C and Control V again to copy it. And then we're just going to put some placeholder text here. So customer name, address, street, town, postcode. Obviously, these will actually be the real thing. So let's unbold that and make it a little bit smaller. And then we'll copy that across. And then kitchen specs can be whatever you want. So let's just say cabinet style. And then door color. Worktop material. And then handle style or whatever you want it to be. And then finally, we will put the customer sign off text. So let's control C and V that. And we can write plan agreed by so they can put their name there. And then signed. And then date. Let's just delete those bottom two and space that text out a little bit. That'll do. Actually, let's just make that text a bit smaller. That's better. So now what we've got to do is add the logo and we're done. So we go to insert pictures, this device, navigate to where your logo is stored. I'm already there. Just click it once, make it a bit smaller and pop it into place. So this can be your logo or the company's logo, whatever. So now we close the master view and let's save it. And let's just get rid of these and save again and that's your template so you can now copy that and make as many pages as you want and then if you want to change any details here obviously it's locked now so all you do is go back to the master slide so you go to view slide master go all the way to the top click on the very top slide and then you can just edit or change whatever you want so let's come out of that again so now we're going to start adding some renders and plans to the presentation, but I'm going to actually close this one and we'll work on the standard one because it's a bit more compact. And I also forgot to put this date and version thing in at the bottom, but you know how to do that now. Um, so this gives us a bit more space to work with and you can download this. I'll leave a link to this in the description below so you can use it as you want. I won't bother adding any client details down here. Uh, but I have put some specifications in from a previous design. I'll just leave those in there for now. So let's add a few pages. We just come to the left, Control C and Control V. Let's just add five or six. We can always delete them later, any that we don't need. So let's add some renders now. So easy to do. Just go to Insert, Pictures, this device, navigate to wherever your renders are stored. It's open already here. 
and then just click on any render you want. So easy to resize, just move it down there and then put it into position. Although I do have a little hack which might save you a bit of time. And to resize multiple images quickly, I have a really good app from Microsoft called Power Toys, which I will touch upon in a minute. So just highlight all of the renders, right click, and then uh, click on Resize Pictures, which would be installed if you have the Power Toys app installed. And on the selector size, select Custom, and then you want width 1065 by height 600 in pixel and the resize type to be fit. Uh, yeah, I just click resize original pictures, don't create copies, but you can choose what you want. Hit resize and very quickly, that's everything resized. So you can install the Windows Power Toys just directly from the Windows App Store. So just click on your little App Store button there, wait for it to load up. Then just type Power Toys And then that's the app. And just to very briefly show you what Power Toys can do, it's got all of these little um, applications within it. I haven't got time to go through them now, but there's some really brilliant, useful things like a color picker. So you can select any color on your screen at any time to sample it and import it directly into SketchUp. The image resize is good, which we've just talked about. Um, You've got a multiple rename thing, so you can rename uh, multiple files at any one time just by edit and replacing words. It's really good, and I recommend that you, you download it. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get back to the presentation. So now we have our renders resized. You can see how quickly it is to import them. You will need to move it up a little bit, but as you can see, it's perfectly sized to go in the PDF. So very quickly, you can just place multiple renders. You can see how easy that is to do. So if you've got eight, nine, ten renders, you don't have to mess about resizing each one individually each time. Let's put one more in. And to import your 2D plans, first export them as a 2D image from your, from your SketchUp file. So just File, Export as a 2D, select the folder and click Export. And I have another plan here which just shows these dimensions for the peninsula. So let's export that as well. I don't normally resize these, but sometimes I do crop them. So if we go over to where we've just exported them to, uh, if you open them in Microsoft Photos app and click um, Edit, then you can just do some basic cropping there. Uh, we won't need to on this plan. Okay, so go to our PowerPoint, click on the slide, then Insert Pictures. and then just make a little adjustment. And because there's only two of them, as I said, it's no point to resize them. Just grab the box and descale it. Okay, now we're done, press save. And then, and then to convert to a PDF, you just go to File, Export, Create PDF, and there's a couple of settings here. I just leave it to standard publishing and then click publish. So this will automatically load up. Uh, I'm just using Edge to display my PDF. And there we go. There's your finished presentation for the client, which you can email or whatever.
So I'll leave a link below to where you can download this template for free and just adjust it to how you want to use it if you want to use it. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See ya. Thank you.